All right, so welcome. It is uh, looking ahead uh, to uh, moving from Peter Marisburg, Scottsdale, the venue of our Wednesday meeting, and it is into Durban, and it is Hollywood Bets Graver, where we are on the turf at Good Card. We're headed by a listed feature, which will be race seven. Don't forget to uh, give us feedback of the weekend so far on our uh, social media handles, X or via our WhatsApp number. Let's get straight down to business. It looks a very good card, and uh, we go straight uh, to Mr. Burrows. It's back uh, to uh, Durban for racing on Sunday. And Mr. Burrow, Scottsville, not very kind of for favourite backers. Yes, it was a difficult card. You know, it looked pretty straightforward, and uh, we saw those good things get beat. But uh, you know, this card's very tricky. Um, I have to admit, but I have found three strikes for the day a bit later. So just tune in and follow our selections a bit later. Um, this race open uh, number four, Grand Occasion, ran in a juvenile plate should be right there, but I'm not getting involved in this race at all. I think we leave it uh, to uh, Mr. Marie. He's a uh, man. I know he's going to see us through the first leg of the bipods because uh, with baby races, he's not going to be very bullish about bankering anything, or perhaps today is an exception. Yes, yeah, so, so tell us more about number 10 over here, please. Number 10. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is uh, basically walking towards the light. Kanyeni is that that is the okay. light. You want me to try and trip over the <laughs> also pronunciation, but basically it is walking, approaching the light. Okay. Uh, let's hope um, we see the light and get through the opening leg of the bar <laughs> pot. Uh, we'll know the results of the first race by now. And um, as, who was it in the first race? Magical View represents Grand Occasion's form line. Now, I watched Grand Occasion's form, uh, debut, Cecil. He, she actually... Uh, came out slow and she was towards the back of the field made up good ground in the straight uh, didn't really quicken just more one paced so i think she's going to enjoy the extra 200 meters um yeah and that was against winners so she's certainly in with a shot of yeah i'm leaning towards what appears to be the stable elect tristan godden on, on number seven ethereal view now obviously she does have the experience uh, she does have pace she'll get into good uh, into a good striking position and I'm hoping she does uh, fill the top one of the top two positions over here. If you want to play wider possibly look at numbers eight and nine as inclusions but yes um, the stable elect with Tristan Godden and the form line has been franked with million voices our first choice is number seven over the four. Yeah just talking about uh, Paul's horse I won't uh, give up uh, the horse holder, just reckless, came up here and had to set up a second behind yes. uh, uh, Ormond C. But uh, it, I won't give up. That was against uh, just reckless against winners eh? in an yes. open. Yes, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the only other maiden in that race has won since then. Well, I think, yeah, t both maidens have won. Quid pro quo and China Berry. Okay. So if you want to go wider, certainly include her. But I think... Um, uh, she, she's uh, she's in with her shot to be here. Thank you so much. Let's have a look at that uh, bipod selection from uh, Mr. Marie. It is a four and a seven. That is the first leg, and then the bank at the three. And as we proceed on, it is. <laughs> I thought the field was coming in the first leg. It's coming in the last leg and certainly looking forward to that. 264 rand still is the outlay, so uh, not a uh, big uh, outlandish uh, amount come uh, taking a unit. And that is with race two. First leg, 1235 race two. Now, it's a PA time. When we get to race three, this is the uh, Narisha as Raja is turning the maiden. The plate is over the 1,000 meters. Philly the mayor is a meetup. And it is a field currently consisting of eight runners. No scratchings have yet to come through for race number three. Favoritism is uh, with uh, the Huston runner. That is number three. Emerald Green is uh, shortened in as I speak. 18 to 10 from 19 to 10. Number four, Head Girl, is at uh, 22 to 10 from 5 to 2. It's a uh, co-favorite. Uh, Second favorite with a Sweet Julia, the six also at 22 to 10. All right, uh, Mr. Marie, race number three. I know you going, we're going to be coming back uh, for your thoughts on your PA selections. Give us your thoughts. My thoughts are this is the best bet on the weekend. Number three, wow. Emerald Green. She is my punt. Uh, she opened up at two to one, Cecil. She's much better on the turf track. Thousand meters on the turf is going to be her, her game. Uh, her only run over a thousand meters on the turf was her best run to date. Last time out when uh, they fitted the blinkers, she was desperately unlucky on the poly track. Um, she's going to reverse the form with Sweet Julia and confirm the form with Headwell, Head Girl. 
So yeah, I'm not looking past Emerald Green. Have a strike. Thank you so much. Have a strike of confidence and I can already preempt at the uh, PA will start with the banker. Mr. Burrows, are you in a concurrence that this is the one to be on as one of the uh, uh, first strikes of the afternoon? Yeah, I think she's got a chance. Um, I thought Sweet Julia, the horse to beat, um, she's having a peak run. It's her fourth run back, and uh, she could be a better horse on the turf. Uh, she was tracking horses like Head Girl into the straight last time out. She angled out. She was staying on. And then Emerald Green came uh, on the inside of her and really quickened up smartly late. Um, I thought Emerald Green at 1,200 meter horse. You know, she is out of a Galileo mare. So um, I'm just it all depends on how Richard gets her out of the gates. And if she's not too outpaced, she'll be running on strongly past them. But Sweet Julia might get first run on her. So. Six to beat, three and four. Six to beat, a three and a four, the way of a Darren Burrows. Let's go to that PA, and it is Bank of the Three, one of the best who are bets of the weekend for Mr. Marie. And then we have to wait till the penultimate leg, and that is Pascali, also Richard Free aboard, as is the second and final bank in that penultimate leg. Again, a decent outlay of 192 Rand, and that is race three. First leg of the PA off at 10 past one. All right, just a reminder of our uh, social media handles. It is uh, X or WhatsApp. Uh, do get in touch with us as we now advance uh, to race number four. This is the first leg of a tricky card as described by Darren, and it certainly looks the part. It is a case of brevity and uh, fortune favoring the brave. Toyko Engineering maiden plate over the 1,400 meters will be that uh, first uh, leg, and the uh, favoritism is with the 10, a run to rear at uh, 28 uh, to 10. After that, you're looking at uh, four to one. There has been a nibble overnight about the nine spelling B. That is Craig Zaki and uh, Dean Canemare. Right, uh, Mr. Marie, we start uh, with you. Spelling B, uh, run to rear, those seem to be the uh, top two. And then there's six to one about the uh, four. Gorgeous dude uh, from the Addison Wright stable. Yeah, Cecil, uh, touching on number 10, run to rear, I think he's a better Scotsville um, uh, specialist. Well, okay. he's a bit of a Scotsville specialist. He hasn't got it right yet, but he runs his best races over there. So I haven't really included him in my play spelling b you know he brings that western cape uh, made in form to kwazulu natal um two runs since being gelded both uh consistent and uh close up um yeah he just needs some luck in running from that nine draw and he could possibly get it right now, I did miss out one in the betting. I'm sorry, my bad manners. Uh, Captain Mossada, people might get the impression it's scratched. It's actually the uh, shorter price ahead of the nine spelling bee. So it'll be run to rear. And mm. then uh, Captain Mossada's second favorite at uh, 15 to 4. Yeah, I think Captain Mossada's uh, got enough pace to get into a striking position. He's got good gait speed. He's got Richard Free to assist him. So I'm not too concerned about the wide draw. Um, if he doesn't have to. Um, exert too much energy, he, he'll certainly be right there at the finish. I mean, um, he was off for quite some time and now he's having his peak run. So, uh, barring the draw, I think a lot is in his favor. Um, I know this horse, Cecil, uh, a lot of people are going to pass him by because of his form lines being weak. But gorgeous door, uh, dude, last time out, there was a horse that crossed him. I think I was trained by Mr. Lafferty and slowed that race down terribly. And he was actually over racing for a stride or two. He looks like a big son of Pomodoro. So if he if he's allowed to use his action, I think he's better than uh, what we've seen to date. Uh, like I say, this, the form lines are suspect. Um, so I do have a little bit of reservation, but I don't think he is um, going to retire Maiden. So... Uh, spelling B with that Western Cape form coming into the race, possibly the horse to beat. Well, I do know that you, you are certainly putting your access uh, to 4 TV to good use. So you really do have a look at the replays in uh, detail, don't you? Mr. Burrows, you certainly had a look at uh, your selection in detail because you've got a bit of value for us and it seems it is another strike for us. Yes, you know, I love these horses going to Durban uh, for the season, uh, these Cape Town horses, because they bring these strong maiden form lines. And Spelling B falls in that category. You know, he's run off the great king, king of spin. 
Uh, Blue Bay last time out, you know, Blue Bay ran a cracker in, the, I think, in the politician stakes behind Greenwood Envy before that. Um, when you compare that kind of form to horses like Captain Masala, Cataval, Gorgeous Dude and Ranteria, um, surely he's just going to slipstream the leaders and pounce at the right time. So I think he's going to come from a quite some way back, but I think he'll get there in time. So I thought he was great value at 9-2. to two. Very much appreciated there. Value about the nine, a spelling B, and there it is confirmed on screen. A win bet in race number four. You want to be part of that a win bet? You've got to be on by 13:45, and you could possibly use it as your banker in a trappy starter to race a number to that pick six, which is starting in race four. Right, so it is a chance to get involved in the first of our two jackpots race number five. It is a nine race program, so that uh, second jackpot will ensue with the running of race number six. This is the Giza Shop, a Phillies Omer 71. It's over the 1400 meters. And here we've got the eight refuse the choice at 33 to 10 has been eased out slightly from the three to one. That is Andre now and uh, Sean Veal. Number six, Aquesto Equelo is at nine to two, five to one about the 10, Miss Gibson. The two Jazz Cafe is at 11 to Two. It is 15 to 2 in from 8 to 1 about the 9 of Fort de Jador. Now, well done to you. I sensation when you did give it to us was at around uh, 5, 6. In fact, it had been shortened in from 6 to 1 to 9 to 2. And I see it went off as short as around 2 to 1. I uh, My fingers were tied, so I couldn't uh, uh, WhatsApp you to yeah. congratulate you. I hope you had uh, you got the lots yeah. there. Well, that's what's on the, under the bridge at this Ooh. stage. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, uh, we got Now, why I refer to that is Rafi's Choice Colors. Yes, um, you know, she must have a chance of, yeah, I just haven't included her. I thought uh, there's huge value about number four of, yeah, Devils and Dust. What price is... Devils and Dust uh, last night was at 12 to 1. Devils and Dust is still 12 to 1. Yeah, I think. Have a look at her rating. I mean, she was as high as a 76. She's down to a 59. She's better on the turf. Her last turf run was a uh, second run after rest. In that race was the apple of my eye and pinstripe. I both think they'd be contenders of, yeah, uh, pro probably looking for further, not over 1,400, but they'd hold uh, their own. But I think off a 59... Muzi Yeni carrying 54 kilograms, neatly drawn, like I say, better on the turf. So I can't believe her current price. Cecil, go back a few runs. Have a look at the run with Miss Gibson, right, on the 1st of October. She's 8 kilograms better off with Miss Gibson. And the one is 5 to 1 and the other one is 12 to 1. So each way value for me, number 4, Devils in Dust. I respect number 2 of you, Jazz Cafe. Suspect form line. But last time out, she came under big pressure going through the 400. And the way she finished her race off suggests she's going to love the extra. So 4 from 2 for me. 4 from 2. Let's have a look at or listen in to Mr. Burrows' thoughts. I know he's got another win selection for us here. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Burrows. It is, uh, I was just congratulating Mr. Marie, and he's uh, been very, very modest about it. Is the selection ice sensation in the colors of uh, Rafif's choice. That is that uh, 33 to 10, your current favorite. Yes, I uh, see uh, Daryl and the guys landed a big gamble because she shortened <laughs> 5 to 1 into 16 to 10 and she won like a 5 to 10 shot. So, um, Rafif's choice, my outright first choice. Um, I would bank her this in your jackpots. Last time out, she was too far back. You know, she was staying on very strongly at the finish, but it was just too late. And uh, her 1200 meter effort before that also found one too good. I think she's well overdue, and um, Sean Veal takes the ride this time around. This isn't a strong field. I think she's peaked uh, to win uh, this time around. Okay, so we will follow with a keen interest, and of course, uh, with our pockets also at the ready with uh, your selections, both you gentlemen. Rafi's choice are for uh, Darren Burrows, and there it is, a win selection. And currently at a 33 to 10, so once again, uh, do jump on, uh, do lump on, uh, whilst uh, the uh, going is uh, good, so to speak, on uh, the pricings. That is uh, race number five, leg one of the jack first of our two jackpots.
It must be said that the quality of racing on uh, Sunday at Hollywood Bets are great. Well, is uh, certainly something to uh, look forward to. And I think it is just a nice a little teaser uh, to uh, what is to come in the next uh, few months. And, of course, uh, we are looking forward uh, to your input as uh, to what you think and uh, the horses to follow during that uh, season that comes up via our X handle and uh, our WhatsApp uh, uh, numbers. That is certainly most to welcome. Right. Uh, uh, Unistar Inc.'s uh, Pinnacle Stakes is over the 1,200 metres and uh, the one gladiatorian last seen here on the high field running a game race behind the dice is at 22 to 10. Three coin spinner championship or record seeking uh, Richard Ferry, 7 to 2, 4 to 1 about uh, the 8 to swing up on a star, 12 to 1 and uh, better bar those quoted runners. Race number six, let us start uh, with Mr. Burrows as a, a man who is uh, out of province, so to speak. Uh, I'm taking you've been following the uh, fortunes of the 8 to swing up on a star. What sort of a future do you see with uh, Swing Up on a Star, Mr. Burrows? Yeah, you know, as a two-year-old, I mean, he was a top two-year-old. Uh, I think he was still with the Peter stable, if I'm yeah, not that's mistaken. Right. And then um, he went off the boil. He was striding a bit short in his races. Uh, that He had a few niggles that they needed to see to. And it looks like he's pretty much over them because he's he's moving better uh, he's got 56 kilos. He beat a decent sort last time out. He's definitely got to say a winning chance. I thought a good traveler uh, must be a runner with 53 kilos. Also was a top two year old, sort of trained off, but uh, his rating has dropped and he's got 53 kilos to shoulder. He's got five lengths to find on Gladiatorian on that 1400 meter run. But he showed improvement when he was dropped back to sprinting trips. So at a big price, good traveler one to include. The horse to beat is Gladiatorian. Now, he's a top sprinter on his day. And um, he stayed the 14 last time out, which I didn't think he would. And he got up to beat Emilenzi Yoko de Duma, who came out to win convincingly. Back up this, uh, well, not up the straight, but in the sprinting trip, one draw. Uh, he's got everything in his favor. He'll be in the top two. And one more to consider, coin spinner and maybe Beatonwood Boy. Thank you so much, Mr. Burrows. And of course, yes, so rightly so. Poor Peter trained a swing up on a start before that. I think it was Tony Nassif. It started off with Tony Nassif. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, we only had a couple of runs with Tony. Uh, Cecil Gladiatorian. I don't think this was quite, has quite got the recognition it deserves. I mean, he's, he's a really good horse. He beat Thunderstruck, ran to Isi Bungu Bungu, Quasi for sure, Das. So have a look at the best weighted column. He is currently best weighted. Three pounds best in, one and a half kilograms. So great race that uh, Stuart Ferry is found for him to, to notch up another victory. I mean, one draw, track and trip suited, best weighted a lot in his, in his favor and certainly the horse to beat. Um, Settled nicely last time out. <coughs> Excuse me, Cecil. Now, Coin Spinner. I watched his latest run because I fancied him. And I was of the opinion that he was never comfortable in running. He was always being niggled at off the bit. And I said to myself, next time out, over 1,200, he'll be able to, to gather his stride and, and, uh, and just uh, move better in the running. So, yeah, he's at Gravel, over 1,200. He's very effective over here. Richard Free re retains the ride. Um, and if you have a look, the horses drawn on his inside, numbers one and two, don't really have that early gate speed. So, he should be able to slot over to the fence and get the run of the race. So, Gladiatorian, I'm going with the best weighted. I think he's a really good horse on his day to get the better of coin spinner in the latter stages. Cheek pieces are on uh, coin spinner. Blinkers were on last night. Yeah. Do you think that would uh, have too much of an impact? Um, he's won them before mm -hmm. and uh, he's been successful with them on in the past. So not really. Okay, Don't right. Think. So that is race number six. A Unistar Inks, a pinnacle stakes again over the 1,200 meters. Five to three is the last chance to get involved in our second and the final jackpot as we now head to our feature of the afternoon. That is race number seven, a listed event and it's certainly something to look forward to. Jackpot. Darren Burrows with that jackpot. He has gone a gladiatorian coin spinner. He's got a swing up on a star beach, uh, beach and wood boy. And uh, good traveler. I see uh, Calvin Abib, quite a striker rate he's got on a beach and wood boy. Nine rides, three wins, and uh, three places. That's just the first leg. And there is that uh, banker in the penultimate leg. Race number uh, eight.
Right, so I did highlight uh, the uh, big one coming up as race number seven and also a last chance to get involved in a pick three. The pick three, certainly very popular here in the studio and uh, popular on the tote as you look at the pools are building up to that last one. It is the last chance to get out of it, so to speak, with an exotic. Now, we've got a co-favoritism of 15 to four. That is uh, the well-related number one, Celestial City, a very good comeback run last time out behind Upwardly Mobile uh, a stable mate, and that is a midwinter wind and is that 15 to 4 co-favorite with the 3. A runner just mentioned by Mr. Burrows uh, when we were doing a preview for a 6. M. Lenz, Yokududu, Malelix of Thunder. A third favorite or se second favorite would be the 4 Laguna Verde, 11 to 2. 6 to 1 and a better bar those quoted runners. Well, let's uh, give the floor to Mr. Burrows initially because he does like M. Lenz, Yokududu, and the last time it won, he made such a brilliant case for it. It was coming down to the 15, I think. It had gone over the 16, got over the 14. And he thought it had found the right trip and he was right on the mark. Uh, race number seven, 1,600 metres once again for Imlenzi. Mr. Burrows, what are we saying this afternoon? Um, he's one of my favourite horses in training. But then I've also got one of my favourites here, Celestial City. So um, the fact that Celestial City, he is a five-year-old, likely raced 1-5 from 11. The only times he got beat was when he was running over 1,800 and 2,000 metres, which was too far. But he's just such a nice horse. Um, he switches off towards the back of the field and he just slices through them. He's got a terrific turn of foot over 14 and a mile. And uh, if he had one more run under the belt, I would say he's definitely the horse to beat. But the fact that he's having a second run back after a lengthy layoff, we don't know if he's quite 100% ready. So I think he has to go into all your equations and exotics. But uh, Emilenzi Okududuma is a top horse. Uh, he ran off Gladiatorian. He was just narrowly beaten on the post. He won a cracker last time out. He really um, has a turn of foot like you won't believe. And Richard Faree will get on very well with him. So those are my two leading lights in the race. I've got respect for Laguna Verde. I've got respect for Narina Trogon. And Sundance Kid, uh, he's really improved since being stepped up in trip. But all his wins have been on the poly of late. And let's see how he goes on the turf this time around. But I wouldn't exclude his chances. Mr. Marie, it is an open-looking start to a race and a start to that uh, last uh, pick three. Just one question, and I really ask this out of curiosity. Prince of uh, Ter uh, Taranto, has that still got the ability to beat a field of this match nature? Yeah, so Sal, I've actually gone field in this race, so yes. I'd love for him to win. Um, yeah, I think he's all too consistent. If he gets luck in running and he's not in need of this comeback effort, um, he, he could potentially feature over here. You know, Celestial City is still an entire. Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Terry has had this race on his radar for quite some time because it is a listed event, and I don't know if he is capable of winning a graded race. So... Um, I'm sure they, th th this race has been their focus. Um, lovely comeback run. Um, and he was yeah. very happy with that because I did speak to him after the race and he was very happy with that run. Yeah, so I'm sure he's, he's actually coming into this race uh, at peak despite uh, being his second run off the rest. Emilienza Yoko de Duma, last time I thought he won with a lot in hand, but mm -hmm. my concern with him, Cecil, is he came into the straight towards the outside. He hung terribly right towards the inside, despite Craig having the whip in the right. So um, we know that he has had his issues in the past, but if he's moving well and he's, um, he's spot on the day, you could see him featuring a beer. Um, yeah, Cecil, I've played for the upset. Right, it is uh, the field. Let's have a look at the field. I think we had the field in our bipod as well, the final leg. So it is field by the bank at 10 in leg number two. That is uh, race number eight, Pascali. And then it's one, two, four, and uh, six in that uh, ultimate race of the afternoon race, uh, number nine. All right, let's uh, get uh, to uh, and last chance to get involved in a double now as uh, we approach uh, the tail end of the meeting. And, of course, a reminder that uh, you can get in touch with us via our uh, uh, social media handles. That is X 
or WhatsApp. Now, another interesting race, uh, race number eight. Uh, ten runners carded. This is a uh, merit rate of 72 over the mile. And uh, the betting at this uh, moment in time has a recent winner just a week ago, Iron Will. And that is at 72 from 15 to 4. 4 to 1 about the 10 Piscotti. 13 to 2 out from 6 to 1 goes the 5 action stations. That 13 to 2 is the 1 and that is Manic Monday. So uh, Paul Lafferty has got the co third favourites and that is numbers 1 and 5 in the race. All right, let's have a look at uh, or listen in to uh, the selectors. Mr. Marie, I know you've got a personal selection here and I do know that Mr. Burroughs has also got a personal <laughs> fancy. So it'll be the clash of the time. Titans. It is uh, record seeking Richard Free on the 10 and upwardly mobile Rachel Fenneker on the 9 Iron Will. Yes, yes, so we in different camps of year. I'm going for the 10 Pascali. Darren likes number 9 Iron Will. Um, the way I read this race is so there's quite a few horses that are going to push forward. We've seen Manic Monday lead in the past, Kings Island uh, led start to finish. Action Stations is a uh, uh, a four type of horse. Peter Both went start to finish. Taxman and Iron Will. So the pace should be on. And Pascali is at his best on the turf. Mm -hmm. He's at his best when he's ridden for cover. Mm -hmm. So the draw of, is of no concern. Um, I think this race is really going to be run to suit him. Richard's just going to be biding his time maybe make his run a little bit early on the outside but uh, i see him running them down so i'm all in the camp of number 10 pascali all in the camp of the 10 pascali and of course it is already out of the bag that uh, mr uh, burrows goes the other way he's gone with the market rival number nine iron will a good win when they're virtually having to make all last uh, weekend last sunday iron will mr burrows Yes, you know, I'm all in the camp of Iron Will here. Yeah. I thought, uh, you know, last time out I fancied his chances because I thought he could be back to best. And we know what Iron Will was capable of as a youngster. Uh, he was a really nice horse. He won over a mile at Gravel, I think, as well. And uh, he also ran second to Captain Casey, if I'm not mistaken, or one of those decent horses. Um his last two starts have been more convincing, more his type of form uh, or ability, should I say. When he beat Mr. Maloney, he got up late. Last time out, he went to the front and they sort of headed him at the 300 and he had another gear and he just extended away from them. Um, he's got a three-point penalty and then Rachel takes off one and a half. So that excludes the three points, in other words, or, or removes the three points. And I just feel from a nine draw, he's going to overcome the draw, maybe sit first, second, third, one off the fence. And I think he'll beat this field. Um, seeing that he's back to best, I think there's more to come. All right, there's a tiebreaker. I'm actually going to go the box exactly here, nine and a ten. And I'm sure I will walk out of it uh, smiling whilst the other two will be uh, <laughs> on the edge of their seats, Mr. Burrows and Mr. Maria, to see who gets the upper hand. But uh, certainly an interesting race and uh, perhaps the sounds of it, if uh, you are looking ahead to a double, perhaps those two horses that will guarantee you that passage through. That is race number eight of the Patanta, but as we head to race number nine, and that's off at uh, 20 to five.